Fluoride Therapy, Wikipedia Audio Fluoride therapy is the use of fluoride for medical purposes. Fluoride supplements are recommended to prevent tooth decay in children older than 6 months in areas where the drinking water is low in fluoride. It is typically used as a liquid, pill, or paste by mouth. Where public water supplies are fluoridated further fluoride by mouth is typically not needed. Fluoride has also been used to treat a number of bone diseases. Normal doses may occasionally result in white marks on the teeth. Excessive doses can result in brown or yellow coloring of the teeth. Fluoride therapy typically uses the sodium fluoride form, though stannous fluoride may also be used. Fluoride appears to decrease breakdown by acids, increase remineralization, and decrease the activity of bacteria. It is believed to work mostly through direct contact with the teeth after they have emerged. Fluoride came into use to prevent tooth decay in the 1940s. Fluoride, as sodium fluoride, is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, the most effective and safe medicines needed in a health system. In the United Kingdom a typical month supply costs the NHS about £0.36. It is also not very expensive in the United States. Medical Uses Fluoride therapy has been proven to have a beneficial effect on the prevention of dental caries. Robust evidence supports the use of fluoride toothpaste and fluoride supplements, in the form of drops and tablets, to reduce the risk of dental caries in school-aged children and adolescents. The ingestion of fluoride as primary teeth are being developed has shown that the teeth have formed stronger and more resistant for caries. Water and milk fluoridation are two forms of systemic fluoride therapy that have been demonstrated to be effective at preventing dental caries. Fluoride supplementation has been extensively studied for the treatment of postmenopausal osteoporosis. This supplementation does not appear to be effective, even though sodium fluoride increases bone density, it does not decrease the risk of fractures. The use of fluoride toothpaste and fluoride supplements in children below the age of 6 years, and especially within the first 3 years of life, is associated with a greater risk of dental fluorosis. However, the use of fluoride supplements during the last 6 months of pregnancy has no significant impact on the incidence of fluorosis in children. It has also been estimated that optimal water fluoridation for the prevention of dental caries increases the prevalence of dental fluorosis by 4 to 5 percent. The observed effects are mild to moderate, usually of minimal aesthetic concern. Reports have claimed that water fluoridation can be linked to the development of osteoporosis and various cancers. However a recent systematic review has found no evidence to support these claims. Consumption of large amounts of fluoride can lead to fluoride poisoning and death. The lethal dose for most adult humans is estimated at 5 to 10 grams. Ingestion of fluoride can produce gastrointestinal discomfort at doses at least 15 to 20 times lower than lethal doses. Chronic intake and topical exposure may cause dental fluorosis, and excess systematic exposure can lead to systemic effects such as skeletal fluorosis. Young children are at risk for receiving excess fluoride, and the ADA has recently issued an interim guidance on their fluoride consumption. In 1974 a three-year-old child swallowed 45 milliliters of 2% fluoride solution, estimated to be triple the fatal amount, and then died. The fluoride was administered during his first visit to the dentist, and the dental office was later found liable for the death. Strictly speaking, 
fluoride therapy repairs rather than prevents damage to the teeth, causing the mineral fluor apatite to be incorporated into damaged tooth enamel. Fluor apatite is not a natural component of human teeth, although it is found in the teeth of sharks. The main mineral found in natural tooth enamel is hydroxyapatite rather than the fluor apatite created in the presence of fluoride. Even without fluoride, teeth experience alternating increases and decreases in mineral content, depending upon how acidic or basic the mouth is, and depending upon the concentration of other substances in the mouth, such as phosphate and calcium. Fluoride reduces the decay of tooth enamel by the formation of fluor apatite and its incorporation into the dental enamel. The fluoride ions reduce the rate of tooth enamel demineralization and increase the rate of remineralization of teeth at the early stages of cavities. Fluoride exerts these effects by the demineralization and remineralization cycle. The remineralization cycle, critical to decay prevention, occurs when fluoride is present in the oral cavity. After fluoride is swallowed it has a minimal effect. Fluoride ions are involved in our three principal reactions of remineralization. Osteoporosis Isoionic exchange by the replacement of F4O in apatite and crystal growth of fluor apatite from supersaturated solutions are able to occur during exposure to low levels of fluoride over long periods of time. Reaction of apatite dissolution with CAF2 formation occurs in higher levels of fluoride and the addition of CAF2 or a CAF2 containing compound. Fluoride's effect on oral microflora and the significance of this effect on fluoride's overall effectiveness against cavities does not currently have a consensus. Many studies on bacterial cells in laboratories have shown the fluoride has many effects on them as an antimicrobial agent. The antimicrobial effects require concentrations of fluoride at least 10 ppmf, which only occurs briefly in the mouth with oral fluoride-containing products. A study looked at fluoride's effects on oral microflora and concluded that fluoride may not solely interact as an antimicrobial agent, acting additionally to reduce bacterial adhesion to teeth, along with the primary action of decreasing demineralization. Further investigation will need to be done to verify these claims. Fluoride can be delivered by many chemical methods. The anti-caries performance differences between them have been shown to have less effect than variations in behavior shown by individuals in brushing, using fluoride products and post-use behavior. Often the chemical form of fluoride is driven by compatibility with the other elements mixed with, price, and such. All fluoridation methods provide low concentrations of fluoride ions in saliva thus exerting a topical effect on the plaque fluid. Fluoride does not prevent cavities but rather controls the rate at which they develop, and so repeated exposure throughout the day is essential for its effective function. The more constant the supply the more beneficial fluoride will be in cavity prevention. Water fluoridation is the controlled addition of fluoride to a public water supply in order to reduce tooth decay. Its use in the U.S. began in the 1940s, following studies of children in a region where water is naturally fluoridated. It is now used for about two-thirds of the U.S. population on public water systems and for about 5.7% of people worldwide. Although the best available evidence shows no association with adverse effects other than fluorosis, most of which is mild, water fluoridation has been contentious and opposition to water fluoridation exists despite its support by public health organizations. Most toothpastes contains between 0.22% and 0.312% fluoride, 
usually in the form of sodium fluoride or sodium monofluorophosphate. Frequent use of toothpaste with 1,100 ppm fluoride content enhances the remineralization of enamel and inhibits the demineralization of enamel and root surfaces. Most toothpastes with fluoride contain mild abrasives in order to remove heavier debris and light surface staining. These abrasives include calcium carbonate, silica gels, magnesium carbonates and phosphate salts. Fluoride is available in three forms during tooth brushing. First, it is available as a free ionic fluoride which can react with the tooth structure, interfere with the metabolism of bacteria in plaque, or absorb to the oral mucosa. Second, it is available as profluoride compounds which can precipitate in the mouth during tooth brushing and release ionic fluoride. Lastly, Fluoride in toothpaste can exist as unavailable fluoride compounds which do not release fluoride ions. This is due to the fluoride ions being swallowed or expelled when spitting. Side Effects Fluorosis High fluoride content toothpaste generally contains 1.1% sodium fluoride toothpaste. This type of toothpaste is used in the same manner as regular toothpaste. The application of high fluoride content toothpaste in adults twice daily improves the surface hardness of untreated root decay when compared to toothpaste with regular fluoride content. Other Risks Overdose Mechanism Delivery Water Fluoridation Fluoridated toothpaste is also available in the form of 0.454% stannous fluoride. It appears to be effective in reducing tooth hypersensitivity. Additionally, brushing twice daily with a toothpaste containing stannous fluoride may reduce gingivitis, gingival bleeding, and dental plaque. Anti-sensitivity toothpastes with fluoride are also available for those who have sensitive teeth. Some anti-sensitivity toothpastes with fluoride on the market contain the ingredients called strontium chloride or potassium nitrate which help to alleviate tooth sensitivity. Fluoride mouth rinses can be professionally applied by a dental professional or used at home. The most common fluoride compound used in mouth rinse is neutral sodium fluoride. Fluoride mouth rinses range from 0.05% to 0.2% in concentration. The fluoride rinse with a 0.05% fluoride content is used for daily rinsing, while the rinse with 0.2% fluoride content is used for weekly rinsing and in school-based weekly rinsing programs. Fluoride at these concentrations is not strong enough for people at high risk for tooth decay. Regular use of a daily or weekly fluoride mouth rinse under supervision results into a reduction of tooth decay in children's permanent teeth. After a fluoride mouth rinse treatment, the fluoride in the mouth rinse is retained in the saliva which helps prevent tooth decay. Toothpaste Fluoride mouth rinses are recommended for use in conjunction with other fluoride therapies, but is usually contraindicated for children under 6 years old as they may swallow the rinse and increase their risk of dental fluorosis. In areas without fluoridated drinking water, these rinses are recommended for children. There are several types of professionally applied fluoride gels and foams on the market. The types of professionally applied fluoride gels include 2.0% neutral sodium fluoride and 1.23% acidulated phosphate fluoride. 1.23% acidulated phosphate fluoride gel or foam is used for patients without tooth-colored restorations, while 2.0% neutral sodium fluoride is used for patients with composites, porcelain, titanium, sealants, or sensitivity.
Professionally applied fluoride gel or foam is applied through the use of a foam mouth tray which is held in the mouth by gently biting down. The application usually lasts for approximately 4 minutes, and patients should not rinse, eat, smoke, or drink for 30 minutes after application. The reason for this is to allow the teeth to absorb the fluoride into the tooth structure when it is at its highest concentration, without being interrupted. This aids in the repair of microscopic dental decay. There is no clinical evidence on the effectiveness of one-minute fluoride gel slash foam applications. A specific benefit when using foam is that less product is required during application, which results in a lower fluoride dose and lessens the risk of accidental ingestion. Additionally, more research regarding the efficacy of fluoride foam is needed as the evidence for its effectiveness is not as strong compared to those of fluoride gels and varnish. Some gels are made for home application with the use of a custom tray. A model of a person's teeth can be made by a dental professional, who then uses that to make trays, similar to a sport guard tray, which is put over their teeth. The patient can then use this to hold a fluoride treatment against their teeth overnight or several minutes during the day. The concentration of fluoride in these gels is much lower than in professional products. The self-applied sodium fluoride gel slash foam typically contains 0.5% fluoride and stannous fluoride gel slash foam contains 0.15%. Head and neck radiation treatment may destroy the cells of the salivary gland which can result in dry mouth. Patients with reduced salivary flow are at an increased risk of tooth decay. The home application of 1.1% fluoride gel with a custom tray is recommended for patients undergoing or are finished with head and neck radiation treatment and patients with decreased salivary flow. More research is required regarding the efficacy of fluoride gels in treating initial dental decay lesions. Fluoride varnish has practical advantages over gels in ease of application and use of smaller volume of fluoride than required for gel applications. The principle of fluoride varnish is to apply fluoride salt in a very high concentration onto the surface of the teeth. Fluoride varnish is a resin-based application that is designed to stay on the surface of the teeth for several hours. As this varnish rests on the tooth's surface, saliva dissolves the fluoride salt, which in turn allows fluoride ions to be released and absorbed by the teeth and soft tissues. Later, the fluoride is re-released into the oral cavity from these reservoirs which acts as protection for the teeth against cavities. Currently, there is also no published evidence that indicates that professionally applied fluoride varnish is a risk factor for enamel fluorosis. The varnish is applied with a brush and sets within seconds. Mouth Rinses Fluoride varnish has shown to be effective in reducing initial dental decay lesions in both primary and permanent dentition. Application of fluoride varnish every six months is effective in preventing dental decay in primary and permanent teeth of children and adolescents. Devices that slowly release fluoride can be implanted on the surface of a tooth typically on the side of a molar where it is not visible and does not interfere with eating. The two main types are copolymer membrane and glass bead. These devices are effective in raising fluoride concentrations and in preventing cavities, but they have problems with retention rates, that is, the devices fall off too often. Gel slash foams Fluoridated lozenges may contain about 1 mg fluoride each, and are meant to be held in the mouth and sucked. The dissolved lozenge is swallowed slowly, so the use of lozenges is both a topical and a systemic therapy. 
a 1955 study comparing the effects of fluoride lozenges and fluoride pills provided clear evidence early that fluoride acts topically. Medical fluoride supplements in the form of tablets, lozenges, or liquids are used primarily for children in areas without fluoridated drinking water. The evidence supporting the effectiveness of this treatment for primary teeth is weak. The supplements prevent cavities in permanent teeth. A significant side effect is mild to moderate dental fluorosis. A Cochrane review also found no evidence that daily fluoride supplementation in pregnant women was effective in preventing tooth decay or causing fluorosis in their children. Varnish Slow release devices Lozenges Medical supplements